If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to Mark chapter 1. And if you have a little piece of paper or a bookmark or something, I would encourage you to, to put it there. We're going to look at several verses along the way this morning. If you find it hard to, to, to follow along, uh, you know, if you're, if you're interested in looking it up later, you can always, you know, jot the references down. And, of course, you can always look at the YouTube video again after if you choose to do that. Um, but we are going to look at um, um, several verses along the way this morning. Uh, you know, it's really important. Uh, you know, most churches, I, I think I can safely say this, not, not Bible-believing churches, but most churches uh, of various denominations and stripes, and even if they preach the gospel, many of them really put no stress here. You come and, uh, and everybody's got a different version. A lot of times they'll, they'll stick something up on the wall. And um, I, I was shocked even quite a number of years ago, um, some friends uh, came to our church in Saskatchewan and um, it was a young couple. They were probably around 28, 29, 30. They were both from um, uh, a, a really Bible-believing background, but they didn't bring their Bible to church. And I thought, well, you know what? They've just traveled in. You know, uh, you, know you try to be gracious, you know, and, you, and all that stuff. And then uh, we got talking, and we found out that the church they go to, nobody brings their Bible. Now, you know, we say that, uh, that we believe the Bible. Do, do we not? Uh, in fact, many churches would, at least they used to claim that they tried to follow this. Um, but how do you know, first of all, if you don't read it for yourself? And how do you know if, if you know, the guy gets up and he's just giving you his opinion? You know, and it might be church tradition, and, and, and that's not necessarily always evil. Sometimes it is. But, but, you know, the way you test all that is by looking here. And that way you know it's not somebody's opinion. You can look at it and you can see it for yourself. And that's really our goal this morning. You can look at it and you can, uh, you can make up your own mind. And we encourage you to do that. Look at uh, Mark chapter 1 and verse 1. Mark chapter 1 verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word gospel means glad tidings. It means good news. Okay, The beginning of of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets. So immediately, even Mark refers to the written word of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Of course, he's talking about the Lord Jesus. He said, you know, I'm preaching and you're coming and you're hearing my message. But he said, but there is coming one shortly. And John, John introduced the crowds to Jesus Christ. Uh, he said, there's somebody coming behind me. He said, I'm not even, I'm not even worthy to mess with the shoelaces. Verse 8. I indeed have baptized you with water. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Let's pray again. Lord, thank you for this, this, these verses. And uh, Lord, we pray that you'd make... Uh, the truth of these verses and what we're going to look at, Lord, make it very clear, Lord, and um, speak to the various hearts in this room, Lord, the message that you want them to remember in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning really from verse 8. 
Okay. And it says this, John the Baptist said, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. I want to talk to you about um, water baptism this morning. Look at verse nine. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Now, Jordan was a river. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. Um, John baptizes Jesus in a river. So I, I want you to just sort of bear with me and follow my reasoning this morning and just uh and um you know you can you know you can make your own decision you know we you know the bible says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty now where a cult is there is no liberty but where the spirit is there is liberty uh so i want to ask you a question this morning can you imagine john he's at the river jordan and he's baptizing people um i know we don't rely purely alone on human logic Okay, I understand that. So the scripture is our final authority. So we're gonna we're gonna really consider what the scripture says here. But um, um, you know this this really seemed fitting. I, I was going to go somewhere else, and uh, and we're having that baptism next Sunday night, and it's something we rarely ever talk about. It's something that religious people everywhere are very familiar with. But the catch is, as is always the case, everybody's got a different idea and a different opinion. Um, but the more you read the Bible, the more you realize the Bible doesn't allow for that. The Bible is on important things. It's very, very specific. Very, very much so. So let's let's use logic for just a moment. We're not going to rely on our logic. But let's use logic for it. I know that's a, using logic is sort of a foreign thought, but but, but it's in our society, but let's use logic for just a moment. So John is down at the River Jordan. Okay, and he's baptizing these people that are coming to him. Um, do you think, and maybe you do think this, and if you do, I'm, I'm not mocking you, but I don't think it makes a lot of sense. All these people are coming to Jordan, and so John gets a, a teacup, and he, he, he brings them down the river, he gets a teacup, and he sprinkles water on them at, at the river. Um. You know, if he was going to do that, he, he, he doesn't need to be at the River Jordan. But let's go even further with that. It says Jesus was baptized of John. And it says, look at verse, verse 10. And straightway coming up out of the water. You know, that sounds like somebody's been in the water and they're coming up out of the water. That's that's. What that sounds like. Go with me to um, keep your place there and go to the book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. In Acts chapter 8, you have um, one of the, the deacons of the, the, new, the church at Jerusalem. And he has traveled down to Samaria. And then the spirit... He preaches down there and then the spirit of the Lord calls him away and the spirit of the Lord calls him to meet a guy who is a, a big shot. He's the treasurer for the queen of Ethiopia. So he's he's a big shot. He's a big government official and he's riding in his chariot. This this eunuch, this Ethiopian guy has just been at Jerusalem. He would be what what they called a proselyte. OK, because um uh, for, an, for a Gentile to worship at Jerusalem, he had to convert to Judaism. And that meant he had to get circumcised and, and he had to embrace that whole religion of the Jews. So he has just been to Jerusalem to worship. But in his heart, he's searching. You know, he's already embraced the Old Testament system. But he knows something is missing. So he's in his chariot and he's got a scroll of the book of Isaiah. And man, he hits Isaiah 53. And just about that time, Philip jumps up into his chariot and they begin to talk. Um, 
Philip realizes he's reading from Isaiah 53. And the eunuch looks at Philip and says, what is this talking about? He says, the prophet that wrote that, is he talking about himself? Is he talking to somebody else? And it says, and Philip began at that scripture and preached unto him Jesus. You guys know Isaiah 53 is all about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And he begins at that scripture. And, and man, he, uh, he gets excited. And um, verse 36. Acts 8, verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded, Philip commanded the chariot to stand still. And now watch the wording. And they went down both into the cup. I misread that. It wasn't a cup. It wasn't a baptismal font. There was a body of water there. And what did they do? And they went down both into the water and both Philip and the eunuch and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. The thought of baptism in the Bible, in the Bible, is always the thought of being immersed um, overshadowed, surrounded, covered completely. That is always the, the thought of the scripture. You're right there in Acts. Uh, just go to your right and you'll see Romans and then you'll see 1 Corinthians. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now I realize, you know, I, I've mentioned the cup or the baptismal font. I realize some people don't necessarily sprinkle it on, some people pour it on. You know, I, I get that. But still the picture, the picture in the scripture, and we're gonna we're gonna see that as we go along. It's just over and over and over again. The the thought of baptism is something being plunged and immersed into something. Look at First Corinthians ten, verse one. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now watch, and we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Of course, that's referring to the crossing of the Red Sea. And um, in the book of Acts, it calls the children of Israel in the wilderness, it calls them the church in the wilderness. And Moses was the head, okay? And so it's a picture of Christ. It's an Old Testament picture of Christ in the church. And... Um, they were, verse 2, they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Um, look with me at the book of Hebrews. If you go to your right, you'll see a bunch of little books. And you'll see the Thessalonians and the Timothys, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews. You know, when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, um, they went... They went down into the sea. Um, look at Hebrews 11, verse 29. Hebrews 11, verse 29. Uh, verse 28. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, now watch the wording, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians assaying to do were drowned. Okay, so the picture is they went through the sea. Okay, and they went, they went uh, through the depths of the Red Sea. Um, and, you know, 
you see the picture because the Egyptians tried to do the same thing and they were drowned. The water of the Red Sea, when they were baptized into Moses in the cloud and the sea, they didn't get sprinkled as they crossed the Red Sea. The picture is they went into the depths and the Egyptians went into the depths and they were drowned. Look at Exodus, the second book in the Old Testament, Exodus 15. As Exodus 15 opens, the children of Israel have just watched the, the armies of Pharaoh uh, covered as the Red Sea has came, came in on them. And they break into song because just hours before they were afraid they were going to die. And man, they have experienced the, the deliverance of their lifetime. And they break into song in Exodus 15. And look at Exodus 15, verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he is become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in habitation. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord of hosts is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also were drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Where is this? Same place children of Israel were in the depths. Look at... Um, Look at Exodus. You're right there. Chapter 14, verse 22. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. They are uh, they're, they're deep in that sea. And you know what God has done? God's done a miracle. Uh, he, it, it was a miracle from the first moment because from the very first moment, that ground in front of them was dry and and the, the, the walls of that water uh, became, uh, the Bible says it became congealed. They became hard as stone. And the children of Israel passed through that sea. It says they were baptized unto Moses in the sea, in the sea. They came out of Egypt. And uh, for them, Egypt, uh, the children of Israel had been 400 years in Egypt now. And uh, it was just lifelong slavery. It was serving an evil king. And they came through the Red Sea, through the Red Sea. It was a miracle of God. And this whole thing is, is a, it's a, it's a picture of salvation and what happens right after salvation. Um, they came in one night into powerful freedom that they never experienced in their whole existence. They came into a whole new experience of life all in one night. Man, there were promises ahead. There was an amazing future ahead of them. There was a whole new life with God who would provide when it seemed impossible. You'll remember that they came out of there and for the next year, which turned into 40 years, uh, bread is raining out of heaven and quail is blowing in. And uh, man, it's just day after day after day after day, miracle after miracle and God leading their steps. And they're, they're now going to a place prepared by God. And the first thing to occur as they enter this new life is they're baptized unto Moses in the sea. Um, they're, not, they're not baptized to enter or to be free. But they're baptized now because they are free. And that, see, just before they stepped into that sea, within hours of that, they, within hours of that, they had applied the blood of the Lamb. 
to their doorpost and the lintels of their of their house, the angel of death, judgment was coming on Israel. I mean, on, on Egypt, like unprecedented judgment. Egypt would be weeping for a long time because of that night. And God told Israel, take the blood of a lamb, put it on the lintel and the doorposts. And God said, tonight the destroyer will pass through. And he said, when I see the blood, he said, I will pass over you. He said, you'll be free if you apply the blood. And they applied that blood. And man, they, they, from that moment on, their freedom is bought and purchased. And within hours, they are marching out of the slavery of a lifetime. Because first of all, they applied the blood of an innocent lamb. And that was what secured their freedom. And what are they doing within hours of that? They're passing through the sea. It is the symbol of trusting God, freedom in Jesus Christ, and new life in him. Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. If you hit the book of Revelation and just back up, you'll see a few little books, and you'll see First and Second Peter. Look at 1 Peter 3. And in 1 Peter 3, when you get down to the end of the chapter, Peter makes a reference to Noah's flood. And so look at um, verse 20, 1 Peter 3, verse 20. He says, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Um, I got a question for you now. See the picture, and we're going to look at we're going to look at the next verse. But um, just as with the Red Sea, the children of Israel were saved as they passed through. They they were they were secured by God Almighty as they passed through that water. But the Egyptians were destroyed in that same place. Well, you got Noah here, and Noah builds the boat, and um, it says he was saved by water. So um, uh, what does that mean, okay? Um, what, what was it that, that um, rescued them? Well, first of all, God said, I'm going to send judgment. Noah, build a boat. And he says, I'm going to be in that boat coming to the ark. Now, you know that Noah and his family are in the ark, okay? And that ark is, by faith, it says, Noah moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Um, if Noah had said, well, bless God, that water's going to save us, you know, he would, he would have drowned like the rest of them. When it says they were saved by water, it means that that water came, they had trusted God, they had obeyed God, and that water it became the tool that just lifted them above the destruction. Look at it with me. Verse 20, the last part of the verse, while the ark was a preparing wearing few, that is eight souls were saved by water. The like figure, the picture, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. And then the Holy Ghost puts a princess, okay, and he, and he says, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Um, what baptism does is it, um, it is not washing your sin away. Uh, the water of baptism doesn't wash your sin away, um, but it is the answer of a good conscience toward God. Um, why is it that in Acts chapter 2, it says, and they that gladly received his word. We're baptized. Well, man, Peter had just preached the gospel. Peter preached, just preached repentance and faith in Jesus Christ to them. They received that. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. The question is, have you believed on Jesus Christ? Acts chapter 8, you know, uh, the eunuch says, uh, I know there's something to this baptism thing. See, all these religious people, this is something religious people get hung up on. And, and religious people know it's significant. And the Ethiopian eunuch knew it was significant. And he knew that, that this thing in Isaiah 53 about Jesus Christ and his death, he knew that was the missing piece of the puzzle. And he was ready to change his whole life, to let Jesus change it. And he says, uh, there's water. Can I get baptized? And, and Philip says, if. He said, there's something you got to do first. He says, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he says, man, I believe. And the next thing you know, he's in the water. He's in the water. The question is, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? And the answer is, my heart is now clean through Jesus Christ. And I want the whole world to know. And uh, I'll, I, I want to I get baptized. Now, the message of the gospel is, is not... Uh, baptism. Can I have you look at a verse with me real quick? Look at Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this is one of those verses that really, uh, really trips people up. So uh, I want you to Look at it with me for just a moment. Um, here's how a lot of people, a lot of religious people read this verse. Ready? Let's read it together. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, in order to receive the remission of sins. And they, they take the word for, and they say, well, that, that means in order to receive the remission of sins. So I have a question for you. Um, heaven forbid, but but let's say you know you you um, you uh, you get jailed for murder next week, and somebody says, "Did you hear about so and so? They got jailed for murder." You know what you don't think? You don't think, "Oh no, they went to jail in order to receive murder." That's not what the word "for" means there. They went to jail because of murder. Now let's read this verse again. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you take that word for it, because of the remission of sins, he says you repent, you turn towards God. And he said then that you follow the Lord in baptism because of the remission of sins, because your sins have been remitted and blotted out because it's already occurred. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You're in Acts. Go to next book is Romans. And the next book is 1 Corinthians. And look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. There in uh, Acts chapter 8 where you just were. Again, the, the eunuch is reading from the scroll of Isaiah, and he's reading Isaiah 53. And he says, of whom is the prophet speaking, of himself or of another man? And it says, and Philip began the same scripture and preached unto him. What did he preach? Did he preach, oh man, you, you need to get baptized so that you can get your sins washed away. Let's find some water. Oh, there's some water. No, it's, it's not what he did. It says he preached unto him Jesus. And when he got saved, when he, as the children of Israel, on the night of the Passover, 
when, when that Ethiopian eunuch applied the blood of the Lamb of God, when he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, he was saved in that moment. And the next thing, the next thing was, he thought, man, I, I want to go all the way with this. Uh, can I get baptized? I got a question. Do you want to go all the way with this? You know what our churches are filled with? And I mean our Bible-believing churches. And, and I realize there's, there's people that are saved and baptized, and they're not going all the way either. So, so uh, we're talking about baptism this morning and the importance of it because it's something we seldom ever talk about, and, um, and people have a lot of crazy ideas about it. Um, I had a friend of mine in his city. He wrote a letter to every church in his city, and he said, that, can, you, uh, can you tell me, uh, can you send me your doctrinal statement? Can you tell me what you believe on baptism? And um, every single church without exception said that baptism was part of getting to heaven. In one way or another, in their doc, every single one of them. We do not believe that. Uh, the thief on the cross, he's dying. And at the beginning of his time on the cross, you know, the, the one thief never did repent. The one thief to his dying breath is cursing Jesus Christ. But the other thief, he starts off on that note, but somewhere in those hours, as his life is ebbing away, he realizes something. The lights come on. And he realizes this is the Son of God. He would have known who he was. Jesus was famous in Jerusalem and throughout that area and in Samaria for healing the sick and raising the dead. Jesus was famous. And boy, it dawned on him. He thought, what in God's name am I doing? I'm dying and I'm cursing. And, and, and it dawned on him, this is the Son of God. And he says, Lord, Lord, remember me. Lord. He acknowledged he was from another world. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He knew Jesus was going to live after he was dead and gone. And he knew there was no hope for him. At least he thought there was no hope. And he said, Lord, remember me. And Jesus, Jesus what did Jesus say? Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Jesus didn't say, oh, I'd like to take you to heaven. But there's no, there's no baptismal around here. Hey, listen, you listen to me. If baptism gets you to heaven, that, that had to happen. Like there's not five different ways. Our Lord, this is what people don't like about our Lord. He is absolute and he doesn't change his rules to suit anyone at any time. We do because we're trying to be nice and sometimes we're just out of our mind. But we... But our Lord never, ever, ever changes his rules for anyone. If that dude had to be baptized to be saved, he was doomed. The Lord said, you know what? If he could have got off the cross that day, you know, you know what the next thing he would have done? If Jesus had you know, performed a miracle and let him get off the cross and walk away, you know what the next thing he would have done? It wouldn't have been long he'd been baptized. You know why? Because... Jesus Christ had just secured his salvation and he was headed for heaven. And But there was, there was no time. There was no time for that. There was no opportunity. So baptism doesn't get you to heaven or not get you there. You know, somebody's throwing water on you or pouring water on your head like 10 minutes before you die. It, now you listen. According to this book, it does nothing. He does not. But just like the children of Israel that night, they applied the blood of the lamb to their house and they were free. Amen. And they walked through there and the next thing you know, God, you know, in the next, within hours, God baptized them in the sea. Do you want to go all the way? You know, a, a lot of a lot of Christians, you know, I, there's people in our churches and they they say, well, you know, 
you know, I did all that stuff and I prayed that prayer and it didn't do nothing for me. Oh, yeah. Well, one of two things is true. Either you were playing a game. Or maybe you weren't playing a game and you got saved. But you know what? You just didn't want to go all the way. Um, you know what? Our Lord makes himself real to people that just they they really care about what he thinks and they want to live for him. Look at 1 Corinthians 1, verse 14. Now, if, if baptism is the way to heaven, think about this for a minute. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 14. Paul says, I thank God that I baptized none of you. That's a strange statement. I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any man, lest any should say that I baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. Look at verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. The message is the gospel. The message is a sinful world can be saved through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If they'll turn away from their old life and their, their hang-ups and their weird beliefs, and, and if they'll just trust Jesus, what he did on the cross is all they need. That's, that's the message. Look at John chapter 4, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You know, there, there are churches that believe that, um, you know, water baptism is, it, it's really, you know, it, it saves you. Okay? There's a bunch of them that believe that. But, um, but what did Jesus do? John chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Now watch. Though Jesus himself baptized not. But his disciples. Here's the Son of God, and you know he's um, he's he's uh, he said, "I came not but to seek and to save that which was lost." If baptism was going to save you, um, you know, then then why wasn't he baptizing everybody? And we jokingly say, "Why don't we just have a you know get a fire hose and just just and just go out in the street preach the gospel and hose people down, man." You know, we have heard the joyful sound. Water saves, water saves. There's power, power, wonder working power in the tub. <laughs> you know what? That's not our message, is it? Our message is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what the Lord told his disciples just before he went up to heaven? He said, all power, Matthew 28. You can look at the last few verses of Matthew 28. Some of the last words our Lord said. He said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. He's looking at his 12. He said, guys, just so you know, he said, I'm leaving here, but I still got all the power. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And he said, looks at them and he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. You know, our Lord commanded them. He says, preach the gospel. Mark 16, He tells them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He says, man, get them saved, get them saved, get them saved. And there's a reason we're going to look at it in a second. And He says, and. He says, baptize them, them named Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Look with me at Mark chapter 1. We are almost done. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 8. I indeed have baptized you with water. John, John the Baptist, he's saying, I, he said, I, I have indeed baptized you with water. But, he said, but he, he's talking about Jesus, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Again, the thought of baptism, the, that thought of plunging into deep water is the thought of being immersed, covered completely, swallowed up, okay? Um, and so John says, you know, I, I've done the water part. But he said, but Jesus Christ is going to baptize you in a spiritual way with the Holy Ghost. Look with me, if you would. At uh, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. 
You know, when a person gets saved, um, God gives them the Holy Ghost in their in their heart. You know, he told them just before he left, he said, he said, my spirit has been with you. But he said, but he shall be in you. And so, you know, he says, he says, it's, it's, he says, a change is about to take place. He said, he's been with you, but he's going to be in you. And, um, and, you know, there again, that thought is that that whole thing of what Jesus Christ does with the person. He says in first Corinthians, for by one spirit, are we all baptized into one body? And that's talking about the, the body of Jesus Christ. And it's like the spirit of God takes you. We, we are in Christ. You see that phrase over and over and over and over and over in the New Testament. And, and you, the night you got saved, the Holy Ghost took you and he plunged you into the body of Jesus Christ. And you are in Christ. You're safe, secure, and Lord called it a baptism. Look at Matthew chapter 3, verse 9. John the Baptist is preaching. And uh, verse 8, um, he says, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. He says, if you've really turned to God, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, old generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath of God? Boy, he's getting just downright sarcastic. See, they were a bunch of phonies and a bunch of hypocrites, and uh, and they were all about their religion and how it looked and impressing people. And um, and John preached John's baptism. He when those people came down to the water to John, it really symbolized they were they were turning the whole direction of their life. John preaches they should believe on him which should come after him, which is Jesus Christ. But it was a baptism of repentance. They they were they were changing the whole direction of their life. And he says to these Pharisees, um, and and what are you guys doing here at the riverbank? He says, Are you guys repenting? And he says, If you are, he said, then your life will show some fruit of that. Verse 9. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. He said, I, he said, I know what you're thinking. You know, it says this about our Lord on numerous occasions. Our Lord would be somewhere and he'd be preaching and often it was to these guys. And it says, but he knew their thoughts. And boy, there's people that hear the word of God and some people open their hearts. Even though they may struggle with it, they, they open their heart. And then there's others that, uh, you know, there's just, they're just sitting there and they're, they're not going to say anything, but but they've already got their their uh, arguments against and why they're not going to do it and why it won't work for them. And, and, and he says to them in verse 9, think not to say within yourselves. He says, I know what you're thinking. We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now watch the words. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You notice at the end of verse 10, it says, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. See that? And he mentions fire again in verse 11. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now watch verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand. And he will truly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. He said, you know, the Lord's going to come and and um, and he's going to gather the, the stuff that's good, the, the folks that are his. He says he's got a place for them. And he says, but the chaff, he says he burns with unquenchable fire. So you got fire mentioned in verse 10, verse 11, and verse 12. And, um, and he says in verse, verse 11, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. The thought of baptism is immersed, surrounded, covered completely. Um, a few years back, 
we were at the Telus World of Science, and and we were uh, they were showing some, you know, uh, IMAX film about the stars or something, you know, and it it shows um, it showed how science says it all began. You know the you know those IMAX things they're amazing. The cinematography it just it just it really is amazing to see. And so you start off, and and they they start the Earth. And it shows the earth as this sea of lava in every direction. I mean, all you see is this molten mass of lava. And um, I thought to myself, well, isn't that just like, just like this world and just like science? Uh, it's just like the devil. The devil takes everything God does and he, he makes it all backwards. You know, the earth didn't begin as a sea of lava, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to end that way. You know, the, the element and the earth and the works therein shall he melt with fervent heat, Second Peter 3. It's, it's going to end that way. It didn't start that way. It's going to end that way. And the Lord here in Matthew 3, John the Baptist is preaching and, and he says, um, he basically tells these Pharisees, he says, you know, he says, you've got an option. He says, there's a couple baptisms. He said, one is, he said, I can... I can baptize you with my spirit. He said, it'll be a whole new life for you. It's a new life for anybody. It'll secure heaven. It'll be the best thing you ever did. He said, and if you don't want that, he said, then you will choose another baptism. And it will be the baptism of fire. Because you rejected it. You know, it says there at the end that whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Children of Israel, they've applied the blood and they go through that Red Sea and they go through the depths and, and God secures them and all is well. And, and uh, But the, the Egyptians go in and they're baptized. I mean, they're submersed, never, never to come out. There's, um, there's two baptisms. And I want to ask you this morning, um, have, you, uh, have you let the Lord Jesus baptize you with his spirit? You know, that spiritual work that he does, where you turn to him and you say, Lord Jesus, I'm just going to trust you. I believe what, what you said. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose from the dead. I believe that's all I need. And Lord Jesus, I want you. And uh, and I'm, Lord, I, I'm serious about this. I'm I'm all in. Have you done that? Because there is another baptism. You know, next next Sunday night we're going to do believers' baptism in water, and there again, it's just the sign that they have already believed on Jesus Christ. It's like that that eunuch that believed on Christ. And man, he says, man, I, I want to go all the way. I want, I want to get baptized. I want to follow the Lord. And, and uh, he says, do you believe with all your heart? He says, oh man, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And so he gets baptized and he goes on his way rejoicing. I mean, he's, he has just started a whole new life. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to baptize some people next, uh, next Sunday night. And really, um, it's just, it's what the Lord commanded. It's the next step. We're going to do it the Bible way. And it's just, it's them saying, you know, I want to do this. In, in the last few months, I've mentioned this. And man, two or three people have come to me and said, Pastor, I, I've, never, I've never done that. I've never followed the Lord in baptism, but I want to do it. And you know what the Lord does? The Lord, I blesses his heart because he instituted that thing. And in the Bible, you'll find everybody that really wanted to follow him, they just jumped on. They just jumped on. Have you let the Lord have his way with you? Have you trusted him? If you're, if you're a believer, I, I hope you'll, you'll give it some thought. And, you, and, you know, there may be several people that are saved in this room, never been baptized. I hope you'll do that. And you need to if you're going to follow the Lord. You're going to jump in all the way. Just jump in. But, but, but if you're saved, you're saved. If you have not trusted Jesus Christ... There is a baptism that awaits you. Have you thought about that?
What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. No mention of your church or your good works or you know anything else. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Let's pray. Lord, this uh, this whole thing, Lord, is just, just about following you. Lord, it starts with salvation and then there's baptism. And then, then there's, Lord, there's a lifetime of steps after that. Lord, over and over, you said to people, follow me. Lord, there might be some Christians in here, Lord, and they. Lord, this has just gotten formal and dry to them. It doesn't mean a whole lot to them. Lord, would you help them to know that it all comes alive when they start following you again? And Lord, for those that don't know you, Lord, this morning. Uh, Lord, would you. Um, would you fill their mind, Lord, with thoughts, Lord, of what is coming? Lord, it was the fear of hell that brought me to your feet. And uh, Lord, that is coming for them. Lord, would you help the folks in this room, Lord? You probably at different points this morning, you may have said something to various people, Lord, in Jesus name. Lord, would you help them? Would you work in their hearts? Would you help them to respond to you even now in Jesus name? With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. If God has spoken to you, why don't you talk to him?
Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your truth. Lord, be with us, Lord, as we leave this place. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed. Thank you.